Hey, it's Shane from Project Automotive, and today we're doing a little upgrade on the N80 Hilux. It's just some power sockets in the back of the door cards for the, in the back for the passengers. If you've got kids with iPads, phones, or any of those things that charge off a USB, this is going to be ideal for you. Nothing powerful or anything like that, just a nice little mod. Keep the kids happy while they're charging your iPad and you're driving. All right, so I've got my Hilux here. We're going to put these power sockets in the back doors. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have the assortment of tools you'll need. We need a drill, obviously, to drill in. We have a cone bit. You can get just a straight drill bit if you like, but you need a cone bit to make your life a little easier, or a step bit, they're called. Uh, some wire strippers and crimpers, a couple of different screwdrivers, uh, wire, you can get a twin core, or you can get a single core of black and red. Your soldering iron, some solder, some electrical tape. Ideally, um, some heat shrink will be good, but for where we're doing it, electrical tape will have to do. And obviously, your socket. All right, so this is the power socket. Uh, this is from J-Car, they're about $18. Uh, it's a Powertech 4.2 amp, so it has two 2.1 amp sockets. Uh, it comes with an assortment of different brackets you can make it fit on. Uh, so you can fit flush fit onto something if you want it to as well. Uh, there is also a couple of different fittings in here which we can mount onto a uh, flat surface, or we can also do a pod mount style as well. What we're going to run is we'll pull this out and we're just gonna run the direct socket straight into the door card with its two sockets. So you can see there it's got its two 2.1 amps. Uh, we'll run this straight in. It has a blue light that lights up as well. And we'll run this straight in, just some power enough. Okay, now it's time for mounting. It will fit in front of the power window switch or it also can fit in behind. I think we're gonna run it in front uh, just so that it's out of the way of the armrest. So when someone is resting their arm, it's not in the way and they can obviously get it to and from that power switch without having to worry about the socket being in the way. Uh, so we'll get this pulled apart and you'll see how it all goes together. All right, so we'll start pulling this door card apart. It's pretty easy. All you need is a Phillips head screwdriver, maybe a flat blade to get some of the trims off, but with a bit of, a little bit of brute force, it will come off. So we pull this door handle here first and that comes straight up and out. It's just held in with a couple of little clips. This one's about the same. You can just, if you, it's a bit tight sometimes, you can pry underneath the screwdriver, but don't scratch it. If you lift up from there, it'll simply pull out. We can power up off the power window switch, but as you can see, the wires are a little bit thin. Uh, so running sort of four amps through at one time might be a little bit too much load on a little wire, uh, as well as having a power window switch running. So we will run through some wires in behind the uh, door trim that run the window. All right, so now it's time for the screwdrivers. You just got a couple of little Phillips heads in here to hold the door to, trim to the body. Pull that out. Pull this one out here as well. Now you think that might be it, but there is a little sneaky one. It's just up in here. So if you get your little flat base screwdriver and you pry just behind the trim and pop it out gently, you'll notice there's another one in here. So we can just undo this one here. And that's all the screws that hold the door trim in. Let's unplug the window switch so it's out of our way. And if we reach underneath, I'll come down underneath here. There's a couple little voids where you can stick your fingers up under here. If you put your hand up inside that little void and pull gently, it'll pop the door trim out. Continue following the door trim up to the top and then you can literally prise it out and kick it out and your door trim's off. All right, so we've got the door trim off. I found it was a little bit easier to put this door handle just back in just temporarily, just to get it out of your way for when you're doing wiring it's not hanging down in your way, it's out of the way. So now with the wiring harness we need to get into is this one here, which is for your window regulator motor. If we just get a blade, you can use scissors, you can use screwdrivers, you can use a, uh, a, anything you want, a knife really. Is there something nice to get in here and cut it cleanly? If my blade's sharp, is another story. And just reveal this little wiring harness. Tuck that out of the way. All right, on the driver's side, your power wire is this green wire, just here. And your earth wire is the white with the black trace. Now on the passenger side, your power wire is actually blue because it has separate fuses and separate power sources from the front of the car. So driver's side is green, passenger side is blue, earth is both the same, white with the black trace. All right, so now we've got that opened up. There's just a little bit of tape here holding the harness together. So we stri strip that back just to give us a little bit more real estate when we're joining our other two wires together. It just gives you a little bit more room to play with to get these wires apart. 
and we want the green and the white with the black trace. So ideally, if you have a set of nice wire strippers, uh, it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, if you haven't, you can use a set of side cutters. Uh, you can unplug it and try and you know, pin in it. There's all, multiple different ways to run. But just for speed, we can grab this wire out separately. We can put our tool in. Make sure there's no other wires connected. We're gonna do two different joins here. We're gonna do one a little bit closer up to the plug and one a little bit further down, just so they're not next to each other when we wire it back together. And just gotta open it up just enough to, just so we can see the wire inside the middle there. Open that up, and now you can see we've got our bare wire. Now as for wire going in, I said we got the roll of wire here. You don't really need that much. The, the circuit you're going to plug into is only literally just here next to this one. So what I could do is I'd make this just a little bit longer than that plug, just to give you a little bit more room. So it's probably about 20, maybe 30 cents will give you plenty to work with. Grab our wire cutters. Cut some wire off. Strip the end off. Now this is a live wire because it is constantly powered up. If we just wrap this around here, nice little twist around. and she's joined up. We'll just fire up the soldering iron and we'll, uh, we'll get it soldered up. All right, so we have a butane uh, soldering iron. You can get electric ones, battery ones, power socket ones, whatever suits you, or whatever you can get hold of. And all we need to do is just solder this wire together. And as easy as that, we're soldered up. All right, as we said earlier, this is a constantly powered uh, 12 volt. So while it's live with power, just make sure you tape it up before you touch anything else on. Like I said, you can run a heat shrink uh, if you wanted to actually strip the wire back properly, uh, but you're only running two amps through this thing, so it's not gonna be that bad. As long as it's all soldered properly and sealed with tape, you won't have a problem. All right, so now we're onto our earth. Now that the power wire is all sealed up, same story, come down a little bit further than where we were on the last one, just to keep it separate. Open it up just so we can see that wire, and you're good to go. Same thing with the wire, all we need to do is basically come from this one down here, you can basically just match the same as your power wire, and get trimmer off. Strip your wire back. Twist around the earth side. And we'll solder this one up as well. Same on this one, just solder, solder this one up. And that one's good to go as well. All right, so with the earth wire done, same thing. Just seal this up. And just having the two joints separated, there'll be never any chance of those touching together, even if they wanted to, they're all secure and safe. All right, so our power and earths are done. Uh, so I'll just tuck them back in underneath here and just tape your door card plastic back up just to keep any dust and moisture out as all as it was factory. And we're good to go. We'll join these up with some terminals. All right, so in your PowerTech kit, that actually comes with a couple of little screws and the terminals which go onto the USB port. And they're actually 90 degrees as well, so it keeps them nice and low. They're not pointing straight down into your uh, door card. Uh, so I'll mount these up on the wires now and get it all done. All right, so we're gonna put our terminals on. Same thing, peel back a little bit of wire. Put them into the terminal. Now these can be a little bit tricky. So what I do is I put them in the back of the wire crimper and you can just crimp the very back. Do it in two spots so it holds the wire in and your wire is now nice and secure on its terminal. We'll just repeat for the, on the earth side. Same thing, peel back a little bit. 
twist the wire, put it into the terminal. Just into the back of the crimpers, wire side first, squeeze, and then the end of the terminal side, squeeze, and we're connected. And we're pretty much done here now for the wiring. Let's get stuck into the hole. All right, so, so as I said earlier, this will fit in front or behind the switch. Once you pull the panel over, you can see there's still quite a bit of room here either side. It all comes down to preference where you want it, whether you want it in behind the switch or in front, it's all your personal choice. I said today we're gonna run it in front just to keep it out of the way. It's a pretty simple way to measure where to go because you can try and work out where this is gonna fit. So all we need to do is make sure you've got enough room between the actual USB port and the switch for the window. And just, if you give it a light little press and scratch, you'll see the little scratch marks. That's gonna be the center just in here. That's gonna be the center of where the switch is gonna go. And you can see there's still plenty of room on either side. And once we drill through, you'll see where it comes through. All right, so we're just gonna go in the center of those marks we just made earlier. Watch your hands and just drill straight through. That's now where our switch is gonna go. Now we need to switch over to our step drill, cone drill. And you'll see on the side of the step drill, it actually goes out to 28 mil. And that's how far we need to go because this is actually 28 millimeters in diameter. So now we can go through here. Take your time drilling this. You don't want to be too big. Ideally, you can get just a little bit too small and we can screw it, and we can screw it in. We don't need any captive nut behind it then. Just a little bit more. And you should be able to just basically twist it in because it is threaded and that should bite into the door trim. So we don't need any captive nuts to hold it. And then it's just a matter of getting it to sit where you want to sit. Again, there's just personal preference where you want it. You can either have the tab to pull out that way, remembering that that goes on the door trim this way, or we can turn it around and have the tab pull straight out. So when they lift the panel up, it's up against the door trim. And then obviously just for cosmetics, get it nice and square. And give it a firm little push, and that's secure, it ain't coming out of there. All right, so now we're timed, and we're all done, we're wired up, we've done our switch. It's now time to put the door trim back on. You'll find this little trim here is easy to get off once the door trim's off. It'll make your life actually a lot easier putting the door trim back on. So we can remove our little holding screw here for the door handle. We can grab our door card. We need to run our wires back up through the door handle. And we also need to put the door handle back into the door trim. It just slides in behind and actually clicks in. And it'll clip in and you'll feel it click in behind. With that panel there now removed, the little switches have fallen back in. With that panel removed, we can actually just sit this door trim down and literally just light pressure all the way down around the door trim. You'll hear it click, and that's our door trim fitted. We can put our back trim back on, three little clips, same thing, line them up, light pressure, it'll clip back in. Now, it's just a matter of reassembling the screws back into the door trim where they came from. Nice and easy, the two big silver ones go into the handle. Mm -hmm. 
little black one goes in behind the door handle. Now three trims can now go back in. So we'll put in the tricky one first. Straight in, click straight in behind the door handle. Our power window switch, we plug this in. Now, you wanna plug these wires back in and on here there's actually a positive and a negative. So you wanna make sure your red goes to your positive and your black goes to your negative. Depending on which way you put the switch, it depends which way they are. So just make sure you look at those and you wanna look for the positive for the red. So we can click our red one on to the positive and put our black one on to the negative. Now all going to plan, we should have a constant 12 volts here and it's now powered up with a little blue neon light. If you wanted to, you could put this into the window switch so it only works up when you're powering up. I think for the kids in the back, the car doesn't need to be on. It can literally just be plugged in. This can be plugged into the car. The kids can watch, charge their iPads. You can charge your phones, whatever you need to run. This is a 2.1 amp on two different terminals. Uh, so you can power anything up while the car's not even running. All right, so depending on where you mount your switch, whether it was front or back, there is a little bit of trimming we need to do inside the door trim here. Uh, it's not much. I find a little bit less to do on the front than the back. The back is a little bit of room you need to cut out to make it fit. But it's literally just this little front section. You can use a pair of pliers, side cutters. Oh, I've just got a really sharp blade. And if we just trim out to where these little trim clips are. It's not much, it's just this little ledge here. This should snap off out of our way. It hasn't affected any of the trim clips where they locate. It's still nice and firm. It's just that little bit of trimming to make it fit. And we're in. Last part is the armrest, same thing. Light pressure, clicked in and we're all done. Now, like I said, this is powered up all the time. It pulls 20 milliamps. So generally, depending on what car you have, what battery you have in your car, you should theoretically probably have 30 to 45 days of this being powered up with nothing charging, just a blue LED and no running of the vehicle. It should be about 30, 30 to 45 days before your battery go flat with 20 milliamps. There's absolutely nothing, it's pulling no current at all. If you're driving the car every day, you won't even notice it. All right, so we're pretty much done here. I'll just sort of show you how good this thing is and how it works and where you can hang your, little, uh, your phones or your iPads. I've just stolen Tim's phone, so we'll plug his phone in. We'll go over to our flap. This flap's removable. You don't need to run the flap if you don't want to. It just covers up that blue light. Plug in our charger, and it's already charging. You can simply just tuck your phone or your iPad inside the door trim, and it's out of the way. Couldn't get much simpler than that. All right, that's it from us today. Like I said, nothing really exciting, just something a little cool, maybe keep the kids occupied. You can charge your GoPros, uh, cameras, phones, iPads, whatever you have to need to charge. There's an extra four power points in the back to charge from. Uh, so make sure you hit the like, hit subscribe, share this around, and we'll see you in the next one.